we know from our college physics that finite angular displacement is not a vector quantity whereas an infinitesimal angular displacement is a vector the reason behind this property of finite angular displacement is the violation of addition commutation relation of vector algebra however at college level we do not provide a rigorous mathematical proof to this property of the finite angular displacement in this short video tutorial i'm going to provide a mathematical proof to this property of angular displacement and for clarity i begin from a finite linear displacement so let us consider a point p an xy plane with coordinates x and y in order to look at its position i consider a reference point o in the same plane and assign coordinate x and y to it from o i can reach to point p through different paths for example from o i can move to point q x with a finite placement r sub x and from q to p with a finite when r sub y and i call this path one alternatively i first move along y axis with a finite placement r y and then turns toward point P and move a finite placement R sub X to reach point P. And I call this path 2. Following with algebra, we see that the resultant of these two paths is the same vector pointing from O to P and I denote it by vector R. In mathematical language, this means that the sum of the two displacement along the two paths can be expressed as r sub x times i plus r sub y times j equals r sub y times j plus r sub y times i. In other words, the sum of two finite displacement along path 1 is exactly equal to the sum of two finite displacement along path 2. And thus we can express the displacement vector r as r sub x times i plus r sub y times j. And if point p is located in space then we obviously add another component along z axis which I denote here by r sub z times k where k is the unit vector along z axis. Now the question is can we write a similar relation for finite angular displacement theta that is can we write theta equals theta sub x times i plus theta sub y times j plus theta sub z times k where theta sub x is finite angular displacement around x axis theta sub y is a finite angular displacement along y axis and theta sub z is a finite angular displacement around z axis well the answer is a big no in order to catch the idea consider this box that this is x axis this is y axis and this one is z axis I first rotate the box by pi by 2 angle around x axis and I reach this orientation. Then I rotate the box about y axis and finally I reach this orientation. Now if I reverse this displacement and I first rotate the box by pi by 2 angle about y axis and then rotate it about x axis, I come to this orientation. It is well obvious that the two rotations do not agree with each other. And therefore, we can prove that angular displacement, that infinitesimal angular displacement is a vector quantity. In order to provide a rigorous mathematical proof to this claim, I consider a three-dimensional coordinate system where x this where this line represents x axis this is y axis and that is z axis and a vector r initially pointing exactly along x axis this vector can mathematically be expressed by vector r equals r times i now 
If I rotate it about z axis through an angle alpha, then the vector r lies in the xy plane and I represent this by r sub alpha. Mathematically, it can be expressed as this equation where r cos alpha is the component along x axis and r sin alpha is the component along y axis. Vector r and r sub alpha are same in magnitude, therefore one can easily prove from these two relations that absolute of r equals absolute of r sub alpha. Now if I rotate r alpha about y axis through a finite angular displacement beta, I get vector r sub alpha beta. Since vector r alpha is rotated about y axis, therefore the component along y axis which is r sin alpha will not change and the component along x axis will split into two components one along x axis and the other along z axis where the component along y axis remain the same equals r sin alpha j. I can rearrange this equation by removing the parentheses and can write it as so this is the component along x axis which is obtained by combining these two factors and here I have rewritten the y component as it is and the z component is obtained by first multiplying r cos alpha with sine beta and the whole is written over here. Similarly, it is not difficult to prove that if we first rotate vector r about y axis through a finite angular displacement beta and then rotate it about z axis through a finite angular displacement alpha, then following the same procedure we can easily prove that r sub beta alpha can be written into this form. Now the term by term comparison between these two equations shows that the x component in both cases agree with each other whereas the y component and the z component do not agree with each other. So we can say that r sub alpha beta is not equal to r sub beta alpha. So the sum of two finite angular displacement in the two cases do not lead to the same result and therefore r sub alpha beta does not commute with r sub beta alpha. However, if the rotation about z axis and y axis are very very small such that we represent alpha by delta alpha and beta by delta beta and apply the condition delta alpha very very small than 1 and delta beta very very small than 1 then using the approximation over trigonometric function sine and cos we can write sine delta theta is approximately equal to delta theta and cos delta theta is approximately equal to 1. With this approximation the vector r sub alpha beta can be expressed in the form of this equation. Applying the condition of cos theta, we can express cos delta alpha equal 1 and cos delta beta equal 1 and the x component reduces to r times i. Similarly, employing the condition of sin theta, we can express sin delta alpha equals delta alpha and therefore the y component reduces to r times delta alpha times j. And for the z component setting cos delta alpha equals 1 and sin delta beta equals delta beta therefore we can write the z component as r times delta beta times k. Following the same procedure for r sub beta alpha we can express it into this form. Now the term by term comparison of the two vectors shows that we can express r sub alpha beta equals r sub beta alpha or in other words the sum of two rotation in one case exactly agree with the sum of two rotation in the other case and therefore for a finite angular displacement delta theta we can write that delta theta equals delta beta times j plus delta beta times k and this 